What's up, people? Happy Friday. Hope all of you are having a great day. Okay, so let me get into this. So the guy from the Justice Department showed up to Windermere to talk to Nicholas and Britt about Victor Cassidine and the WSB and Faison. So he said, basically, he needs Britt's help because it's been implied that Robert Scorpio and Anna Devane murdered Faison. And he wants Brit's help to bring Anna down. I was thinking to myself, Brit better not help him. Who gives a fuck about Faison? Faison never even cared about Brit. He always wanted a son. And when they had Brit, he never even wanted Brit. He doesn't he doesn't care about Brit. So why should she avenge a father? get revenge for her father when her father never even cared about her and all Faison ever did was torture people kidnap people kill people he was a despicable person so why would you want to get revenge for his death if he is dead because we still don't know what Anna and Robert did my question is how do they got a file on Anna and Robert saying that they murdered Faison, nobody even knew what happened to Faison. There was no witnesses. So how could you have documents or files or whatever about what happened the day Faison died, allegedly, when there was no witnesses to it? And it's not like Anna and Robert were running around town, running their mouths about what happened to him because they were very discreet and very quiet about it. So how does anybody know about that? That's the big question. How? That's what I would like to know. Um... Because I honestly don't think Victor Cassinine is dead either. I honestly don't believe he is. Um. So anyway, Duke is still being a princess. He's still being a queen, sitting in a fucking interrogation room, refusing to turn Sonny in. I'm like, are you serious? You're refusing to testify against Sonny. You dumbass. You already spent 20 years in a Turkish prison and you want to spend some more years in a prison. You already probably what 60 years old. You want to spend your golden years in a jail cell? Seriously, I wouldn't. After spending 20 years in some Turkish prison, there's no way in hell I'm willing to spend another few years in, in somebody Pettenville. There is just no way in hell. I'm sorry, Sonny ain't worth all that. And he, that's, that's what I said yesterday. He barely knows Sonny. Why are you sticking up for him so hard? Why? You barely know Sonny. And the first time he met Sonny, when him and Anna went to Sonny's house, Sonny was a little rude to him. So why are you jumping through hoops to protect a bastard that you don't even know? Like, come on. Seriously, it makes no fucking sense. And then Carly and Sonny, they throw them in the jail cell next to each other which is befitting they have adjoining jail cells and they're exchanging i love you's and carly sitting there talking about how could she be you know it's all you know they sitting there trying to play the blame game and sonny wants to take all the blame all y'all to blame carly in my opinion i'm gonna break this down to you carly talking about some how could i not see why didn't I listen to everybody when everybody warned me about franco i'm gonna tell you why she didn't listen because even jason said it before she's too headstrong she's too stubborn and she always wants to prove somebody wrong every time somebody tell her not to do something or warn her about the dangers she does it anyway because that's how carly is she's too damn immature see she could have got away with that shit years ago because she was younger but you're in your 40s now you have freaking three kids two of them are grown you're in your 40s possibly a grandmother you should have more common sense than you have. It's obvious you have no common sense. And at your age, you really should have it. Seriously. Like, it makes no sense for you to be this old and keep making the same immature, dumbass decisions that you've been making. I would expect this out of people like Michael, Morgan, Jocelyn. I would expect it out of them because they're young. You know what I mean? And, you know, I would expect them to not listen to when people give them warnings and try to warn them from something or someone, I would expect them to be the dummies and not listen because of their age. It, it fits their age. But you, come on now, you're a grown ass woman. People are telling you something for a reason. They shouldn't even have to warn you. You should have known from the get go not to get involved with him, but you chose to anyway, because that's the kind of slut that she is pretty much. And when I said Carly is a whore, 
I wasn't talking about the fact that she slept because she cheated on Franco. I don't give a damn about Franco. I don't care about Franco's hurt feelings. I mean, okay, yeah, Franco may have a couple of fans or whatever that might make excuses for his actions, but I'm not making excuses for his actions because don't nobody care that he got cheated on. Need I remind you when he first came to town, the hell that he caused on everybody, innocent people got hurt, still getting hurt because of him. He's still running around hurting innocent people. So if you're going to sit there and defend the son of a bitch, then you're just as sick as he is. I'm just saying, like, I get that it's a character, it's a show, but still, I mean, that's pretty low and pretty sick. And it's disgusting that people would defend somebody like that. That's just crazy to me. It's like, how do you defend that? A person constantly hurting innocent people that have done nothing to him. Children. I mean, come on, he threatened a nine-year-old girl and you're defending him? Seriously? So you you you're you're okay with a grown ass man threatening a nine year old child. You're okay with that. Okay. That's just sad. I go off when I when I see comments like that. It's like really? It's like I guess Carly isn't the only person lacking some common sense. I'm just saying, like, how do you do I mean, I defended some people that have done some bad things in their lifetime, even in real life. But let me tell you something, there's a limit to what you do that I will defend. There's a limit to it. Trust me. I, I do have morals and I do know, you know, it's just, it depends. Like I will defend a person like Sonny. I've defended Sonny. I'm a fan of Sonny. I've defended him even when he's done some harsh things, but on this, I will not defend him. I will not defend Carly. I, I will not because they're all wrong in my opinion. And Carly, when Sonny said that Duke spent 20 years in a Turkish prison, did you think Carly cared? Hell no. Carly didn't care. She don't care if Duke got to go to prison for Sonny. She don't care. And I'm like, see, this is that bullshit that I'm talking about with Carly and Sonny. Straight ass bullshit. They don't give a fuck about nobody. All they care about is them. So you're okay with Duke going to prison as long as Sonny gets to get out. That's what you're okay with that. It's like, seriously, bitch, both of them deserve to get the book thrown at their asses. And Duke just dumb. I have no sympathy for Duke either. You want to be a dumbass and go to jail for Sonny? Go right on ahead. Go ahead. I have no sympathy for you. I mean, and Lucy Coe, I just wish this bitch would shut up. Like, seriously, why are you all up in Anna Devane's face when she's doing her job? She's the police commissioner. He broke the law. She's locking his ass up. She warned him. She even gave him a chance to recant his first statement and he refused. So what did you want her to do? Overlook it? She can't. I'm going to tell you right now, if she was to let Duke walk away from all of this, then she might as well put her badge and gun on the desk and retire. She might as well resign because there's no point in being commissioner. If you're not going to lock up the guilty, there's really no point. And he broke the law. So she locked his ass up. She did her job. What do you you're mad at somebody for doing their job? Get over yourself, Lucy. Like, seriously. Lucy has no room to judge or talk about anybody when you were messing around with Scott Baldwin behind your husband's back. Seriously. And then you publicly humiliated him in front of a room full of people and on national television. Seriously, bitch. I mean, come on now. You have no room to talk. She need to get her life. So anyway. Um. So what else happened? Obrecht could not wait to get Jake, well, Jason, out of the hospital. And Elizabeth, I would have fired her. I'm just serious. Like, Elizabeth is so rude. I understand that she don't like Obrecht, but at the end of the day, you're she's still your boss. Like, have some shred of, maybe not respect, but I mean, have some decency. You know, have some manners. You don't have to disrespect her in public like that. She is still your boss, and she can still fire your ass. I don't care if you're off the clock or not. She can still fire you. Um, Elizabeth is so dumb. That's why I said so many people on this show should not be parents because it's so unfit. I mean, they're just unfit to be parents. How are you going to let this dude that you don't even know move into your house? He could be a child molester. He could be a murderer. He could be he could be Jason Voorhees offspring for, you know, and you're just going to let him shack up in your house with two of your little kids and you don't know nothing about this dude just because he seems nice and charming. So what? Hannibal Lecter was charming and look at him. He was a cannibal. 
I mean, I'm just saying he ate people. I mean, seriously, he was a charm in person. He was nice until you got to know him and he wanted to eat you. I mean, seriously, use some better judgment, woman. So Jake noticed Alan Quartermain's picture and Edward and Lila, and it kind of started to, you know, he said that he knew them from somewhere. Hopefully his memory come back because I hate memory loss storylines. It's just as they drag them out and I got a feeling they're going to drag this storyline out too. I'm willing to bet Jason probably not going to get his memory probably till 2015. I'm willing to bet because they do love to drag storylines out and I get sick of that. Um... So he when he went to Elizabeth's house, he found a picture of Jason and Elizabeth. And I think part of it is starting to jog his memory again. I believe it is. Um, Michael. Michael was the highlight of the show for me. He did not give no fucks about Kiki. Zero. Even when Kiki walked in, he still he told her to get out and he still started kissing up on Rosalie in front of Kiki. I was like, now that's badass. Some people said Michael's taking this thing a little bit too far, but in my opinion, he ain't taking it far enough. And he's still letting them stay at the Brownstone. You know that? He's still letting Morgan Morgan and Kiki live at the Brownstone. He never said anything about kicking them out. He's still letting them stay there. My opinion is if he gonna let them stay there, I would make their ass pay some rent. I'm just saying. And I still would fire their asses from ELQ because they do work for ELQ rehabbing a brownstone. So I would fire their asses and I would kick their asses out the brownstone if they're not going to pay rent. Kick them out. Um, Sonny has a big house and he's not going to be living there anytime soon. So let them go shack up at Sonny house or Carly house. I mean, let's be real. Kiki could sit there with them crocodile tears all she want, but don't nobody care. Her excuses is, is ridiculous. Everything M Michael said to her was so true. She wants the brother that she can't have. And this is so true. She did this on purpose to create some drama. That's what she did. She did all of this on purpose to create drama. And it's quite obvious that she did it on purpose to create some drama between Michael and Morgan. Because that's what Kiki does. She creates drama. That's what she that's what she do. Um, When she was with Morgan, she kept thinking about Michael running to Michael, confiding in Michael. But then when her and Michael get together, now she's running back to Morgan, confiding in him. Now, it's like, seriously, you're playing ping pong is what you're doing. Bouncing from brother to brother because she likes drama. And Michael nailed it on the fucking head. I was like, exactly. He gave it to that bitch. And she going to try to say, I knew the writers were going to do this. Try to make Michael out to be the bad guy in this breakup between him and Kiki. No, bitch. Kiki's the bad guy. And I have no sympathy for this witch. Um, and the way he told her, he was like, and when you leave, before you leave, leave, the, leave my key. I said, yes, kick that bitch to the curb. He told her to leave the keys. To the apartment. I was like, yep, skedaddle. So Michael went to go see Sonny and Carly. So I would love to be a fly on the wall in that jail. Um, I can't wait to see Monday to see what's gonna happen between him, Sonny, and Carly. Notice that he walked straight to Sonny, like he barely even gave Carly a second glance. Carly is a whore. Like, she just I just can't every time I say she's a whore. The reason I say that is because of everything she did. Like I said, I don't care that she cheated on Franco. She's not a whore because of that. I really don't care about his hurt feelings. I don't care. Um, Franco doesn't matter to me. But it always reminds me of the night that she slept with Jackson Sonny on the same night in 2008. It always brings me back to that night. It was so disgusting. You slept with your ex-husband and then you slept with your current husband all in the same night. Oh, speaking of nasty, I just I had an observation. So Michael just got done having sex with Rosalie. He got out of bed, put on some pants, put on a shirt. He didn't put on no deodorant, didn't change his clothes, brush his teeth or nothing. I'm like, did anybody notice that? I'm like, really, Michael, you just going to get up and just bird bath people, bird bath. I mean that's what Carly should have did tonight. She slept with Sonny and Jax. At least 
get some handy wipes or something and just wipe. I mean, come on, bird bath, lick yourself like a cat, something to clean yourself, because that was just nasty. Ugh. Anyway, I hope you have a great weekend. I think I talked about everything in this episode. Oh, Anna Devane, she bumped into Obrecht at the hospital, so I can't wait to see that. Um. Anyway, I hope all of you have a great weekend. I will see you all you Monday. Have a great weekend. See you later.